You guys know about the conservation fund license plate? People will drive around with the uh, conservation fund. This was actually built by the conservation fund grant back in 1997 uh, by the bat people that worked for the Pennsylvania Game Commission. They spent, they spent three days here welding and cutting the uh, bat door. A uh, very well solidly uh, placed. As I can say, if you take a bulldozer to yank the, uh, the bat door down, you're going to uh, take the whole hillside with it. It's very secure. You will see no doors on it. Okay, you won't see any hinges, locks, or anything. It's just uh, barred over. Uh, seven and a quarter inches between the bars. Why that particular dimension is the fact that not the only person that gets their head through that, that opening is a baby. Okay. <laughs> what we have living here. Predominantly, we have the little brown bat. Okay, the little brown bat looking away from you. Okay, that's the, that's the most common. They like to hibernate about six feet off the floor, up to the up to the uh, up toward the ceiling. You don't find too many little browns on top of the ceiling. The guys that you do find on the ceiling is this guy. He's the Eastern Pipistrel. We call him the Eastern Pip. The Eastern Pipistrels, they love to be wet. They love to be in the area of high humidity. Okay. Uh, we do, we do also do have big brown bats, and uh, rarely we have the northern long-eared bat also here. Uh, if you look on the, the, the rock overhanging the shaft, you'll see a, a, a depression, like a, um, a tube in the, in the rock coming down. It's about uh, two inches in diameter. This is what we call a, a, a drill hole. What they did, what the York Iron Company mine did at least, was to uh, drill holes and put black powder in. But like I said, there, there was no, uh, there was no um, tools or no equipment. So what they had was a two foot long chisel. It had a star bit end on it. This is one of the star bits that we have discovered here at Rob. And one person would hit the, uh, would hold the chisel. His friend would take the 20, 10 pound, 10 pound uh, sledgehammer and whack it. I mean, whack it. He'd rotate the chisel a quarter of a turn. Hit, rotate, hit, rotate, hit. And after I do that for 30 minutes, we'll have about a hole that big. So I say friend, if I'm going to hold a chisel for somebody, I don't want somebody swinging that sledgehammer that doesn't like me. Because right? you know, he, he's literally doing the full swing. I mean, he's roundhousing it. So this is what we call, and this is what we call a star bit. We have discovered those here. We actually got a cache of mine tools. Uh, so if you want to walk up and look at the back door, come back down here, because we're going to walk in here. Okay, just don't run. Yeah. Yeah. I know a back way. I mean, it's a back way, but it's basically the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Uh, so I and one of my assistants came out just for our own curiosity and we dug a tr trench across here and hit the railroad. And that's all we did. We left the rest for the summer of uh, 19... Uh, the Hanover Branch Railroad, for the end of the York Iron Company mine history, did put in their own siding up to the mine. That's what, and that, that, this is what this is probably a, a piece of. Okay, whereas York Iron Company mine was using small stuff, uh, Hanover Branch Railroad actually put, put in the real stuff. Uh, but how they, how they got the ore down to the railroad track is about uh, three quarters of a mile down, down slope. According to the book, they, they literally gave the mine cart the push. And it went down by gravity. It's like a it's like a 60 foot drop from here down to the railroad. So the cars ran by themselves to the bottom. Where they were unloaded, the ore was uh, transferred into a regular train car. And much of the ore actually went to the Ashton Furnace in Maryland at the other end of the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Remember these guys got paid like a nickel a day for working out here, so there's one day pay it somebody lost. And they went home and the wives got upset because they couldn't give them the paper yet. It's, uh, it's, very, it's, it's very big, but uh, 1868 sleeve nickel. Sleeve nickels were only made, I'm not a coin collector, but they were only made for five or six years. But, uh, anyway, so, anybody have any questions here? We're going to keep this in place as a, a teaching. And there was a cable up around the pulley into a house that's called the hoist house. But there was a machine like a crank that operated. Okay. Well, I'm standing. Yeah, at least I'm in the hoist house. You guys might be too. You guys are. Okay, the hoist house. Um, the bricks you see over here that are that are stacked up uh, was a surprise to us when we discovered it. That was that's where the boiler sat. That's uh, here, you did find a lot of nails. There's a, there's a nail at the bottom. I brought this along because it shows you also the, the artifact form that archaeologist students that we have here, nine to 12 year old, have to uh, do. For every artifact they find, they gotta, they gotta fill out a form. Archaeology is a lot about doing the paperwork to be documented. Mm -hmm. also, not any good to us. Okay. Um, there, is, there are some fire bricks. This one's a little vague, but uh, it, it, it's marked CM. CM. And actually, actually, if you go to the uh, Heritage Trust uh, website, under archives, there actually was a CM brick company in New York in the 1870s. Aha! Uh -huh. That's where that came from, okay? Well, I made it back to Lancaster County and uh, thought we'd at least show you the book Jerry has written called Time Walk. It shows the geology of Adams, Lancaster, and York County. And uh, it is not only just the geology, but also a lot of the information on where you can go and actually see the different types of rocks and things like that. It's in paperback form and uh, very interesting. A lot of charts, details, things such as that, where not only you can go to see these things, but where you can actually, you know, find examples. And it's, it's just chuck full of information. Pictures, color pictures, a lot of pictures in the back explaining different things different places, different sites, different happenings. And also you can go to the York County Parks website and uh, you can also check out a lot of their programs and things coming up in the future. So for now, we'll be saying goodbye.